Good evening, John. Thank you for coming. Uh, this is our May seminar. And uh, you've been already here, I guess. Yes, yes. Yes, yes, yes but not as a speaker. Not as a speaker. Not as a speaker. No, okay. Uh, today, uh, you are the speaker. I'm very glad to have you here. And in particular, you will give me the theme uh, you chosen from your files. The university <laughs> in its place, the social and cultural impact of universities. This is what uh, I believe should be important theme for the young university as well. As usually, you know the, 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 the routine mm -hmm. in this mm -hmm. seminar, mm -hmm. so uh, mm -hmm. it's uh, your time yes. now, mm -hmm. and after that, of course, we'll come with some questions, of comments, course. and so on. So, the floor is yours, please. Thank you, and uh, thank you for the invitation to come here, and thank you all for coming along. Um, what I, I thought I would talk to you um, about is, is um, it's a project that we have recently finished within the, with, so it is a British project and uh, we're writing the book of the project at the moment, so it's very much, you know, in my, in my mind. Um, and so whilst the, <clears throat> the research that I will be talking about is research that was carried out in the UK, um, I think it is more broadly applicable, and, and, and certainly um, I, I've got a number of, of questions to you, in a sense, um, which would be concern it, its, um, its applicability to a university like this one, you know, in a place like this place. And the, um, the title of the um, of the presentation, which <clears throat> incidentally is the is the title of the of the planned book, um, which is there is a, 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 a deliberate ambiguity in the title of the university in its place, uh, um, as as whether this is a kind of a, a limitation of the of the of the of, of the of the of the university, and the extent to which. Um, arguably, we do need to um, understand context and place if we are to understand uh, um, the activities of particular universities. One of the things I think you will um, hear me say several times during the presentation is that one of the things which the project taught me <coughs> um, I mean, I come at this as a sociologist by training, um, but I've increasingly come to the conclusion that we really need to understand the history and the geography of, uh, of, 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 of things. Um, and I think quite a bit of this project uh, um, has to do with um, history and geography. Well. The whole notion of impact is quite a big theme in British higher education at the moment. And it is a theme that effectively has been put there by government rather than by higher education itself. Um, because at a, a time of um, limited uh, um, public spending, the arguments about um, impact become quite important to justify both state and personal investment into, into higher education. And so the, the um, personal investment, some of you may have heard that we now have, you know, our, the government is introducing uh, um, very high student fees, and so the notion that there will, that, that this personal investment by the individual um, will have sufficient impact, and here we're talking about earning power over, over somebody's life, um, to make the, the investment worthwhile. And at, a, um, at, at the level of state funding, there are, you know, questions to be asked about the, the social, the economic um, benefits um, from investing in higher education. 
Although I have mischievously pointed out at one or two meetings that um, impact can be both positive and negative. Um, and I remember getting um, at, at, one, at one meeting in, in one university at home and people around the table thinking that, well, if they could at least claim that their university was pretty harmless, this was probably as good as they could actually you know, claim, you know, that, that, that at least they had not done anything bad. Um, one of the things, of course, as I'm sure you could well imagine, of course, is that um, impact is very difficult to measure. And in the, certainly in the debates in my country, there's a lot of rhetoric, a lot of discussion, um, but pretty limited evidence about um, what the, um, the impact of universities actually is. And there are questions to be asked about the nature of that impact, <clears throat> the size, the scale of the impact, and the mechanisms of that, of that impact. Um, and there we would be interested in the, the balance between the impact of the research functions of the university and the teaching functions of the university. So in terms of some starting um, points, I think if one looks at the, 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 the larger sort of literature about, about higher education, um, I feel a, a quite a lot of it, you can actually reduce the discussions to people who are claiming that there is um, an economic um, impact of higher education. Um, and to some extent, I think a lot of um, liberal theorizing um, is, um, is talking about that it is investment in higher education is important for the impact it has on the economy, etc., etc. Um, but alongside that, I think we can also find work which talks about what I would call the reproductive functions of higher education. Pierre Bourdieu is probably one of the people who most um, frequently comes to mind there. Uh, and here we can be talking about things like the 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 reproduction of inequalities, the reproduction of, of, um, of, of, of elites. And that takes us to the notion of there being winners and losers in society when one looks at the impact of, um, of universities. <clears throat> the other thing, and I have quite a bit to say about, and we, I think, I would hope we can discuss is that in talking about impact, we have to recognize <clears throat> both the diversity of higher education and the diversity of, of different societies. So there's not necessarily any easy global answer to these, um, to these questions. Um, and as I've already mentioned, <clears throat> um, I'm increasingly uh, um, coming to believe that um, an understanding of the history and geography of particular university contexts is, is important to answering these questions. So then, just a few things about the particular project that we've done, and this was the title of the project. Um, one always tries to get a title that gives you a memorable acronym, and ours was the HEART project. Um, and what we did um, was we, we, we've been looking at um, four different universities in four contrasting regions um, within the UK, um, one in Scotland as it happened and the other three in England. Um, things that the project was interested in um, w in particular was the impacts of higher education on um, relatively disadvantaged groups and communities. Um, I think one of the other things that we indeed struggled with was to distinguish between 
discourses, engagement, and impact. And I've really sort of said that, I think, already, that there is a lot of rhetoric, there are a lot of words, you know, um, stated. Um, but in fact, um, we've, we, we, I think, found um, we could collect quite a lot of data on discourses of, of impact. Um, we could find also quite a bit of, of data on, on engagement, on activities, on the things that universities did with the intention of um, making impact. Um, but direct evidence on impact itself um, was, was a lot trickier. What we did spend quite a bit of time doing, and what was put in a way quite central to the project, was collecting the views of people both within universities and outside of universities. We've used the phrase here of, of stakeholders. And here, I mean, within the particular regional context, we'd be talking about local politicians, local businessmen, um, people working in the health service, local hospitals, schools, the police, I mean a whole range of, 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 um, um, of, 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 of groups who had, um, well, who certainly had views and had encounters with um, their, their, lo their local university. We certainly found, and, and I, we mentioned contrasting universities um, and um, contrasting regions. Um, in terms of contrasting regions, I mean the the, the, the sorts of things that we were we, we ended up looking at would be um, differences in terms of sort of socio-economic circumstances. Um, prosperous unemployment, heavy industry, you know, or, or not so, the uh, a socio-economic strand. Um, there are also differences to do with place and location. Um, part of that was to do with, you know, say how far away from London and how far away from, you know, from, from the capital. Um, but I think as well, how clearly defined, you know, sort of some place, you know, how almost on a kind of a, a remote to close, you know, um, continuum. Um, and another feature of the regions that we looked at were actually the numbers of universities that were in the were in the region or within the within the within the location. Um, I can tell you about. Uh, I mean the, the 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 four. I mean in in one um, one of our cases um, was um, effectively in London, but not in the centre of of London. It was an institution um, which um, was based um, in. Um, an eastern part of the of the city, which had been traditionally very much sort of you know working class um, industry. Um, most of the industry had gone. Um, the white working class was now largely replaced by a multi ethnic you know en uh, environment. But equally, there was a lot of um, industrial regeneration um, going on. So there was a lot that was happening socially and economically. And of course the other feature was that boundaries were very were you know were, were very blurred there. You know, you you were part of a very, very large sort of kind of conurbation. And what could contrast that um, with um, a university um, in a in a town in in the the northeast of the of the country in in, in Middlesbrough, the University of Teesside, um, where it was the only university around. Um, this was um, quite a remote place um, that had had um, 
prosperity in terms of um, heavy industry, steel making, chemical industry, most of which had most of which had closed, and so it was an area that was kind of re reinventing it, it's, 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 it, 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 itself. But many people were regarded as a long way from anywhere. Um, another one was um, the University of Manchester, um, you know, a, a, a pretty prosperous major conurbation with some other universities, with several other universities there. And then our, our fourth one was in Scotland, in Dundee, um, where we were looking at the University of, um, of, of, of Abertay. And the sorts of things that we were interested in, 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 in all of the case studies, um, were, <clears throat> um, and I'll come on into a moment about our, our um, focus. If you remember from our title, we're talking about social and cultural perspectives. And one of the distinctive features of our project was that we were not focusing predominantly on the economic which is what a lot of the discussion and research looks at. We didn't ignore the economic, but we were looking more broadly than that. Um, so um, areas we were interested in, um, extending participation to socially disadvantaged groups, um, the cultural presence of, um, of, of, um, of universities, um, their civic role, their constituencies, but also not forgetting um, local employment opportunities and their and, and their constituencies. But I mean, on the the you know on the employment side, we would not necessarily be, be interested in you know the old question of do the graduates get jobs and are they good jobs. We would actually be interested in the. Um, the jobs that are generated in in the shops, in the bars, in the nightlife by actually having a large university, you know, bringing in thousands of students into the, into the city. What 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 does that do to the town in which it is um, it is it is located? So that was. Um, just a bit of background about the project, and I'll move on to a moment to sort of pull out sort of some of the emerging themes from it. Um, I would just mention, though, as a little bit of context to this, this was actually a case where, funnily enough, um, we'd actually done probably more work internationally on this theme than we had done in the UK. And a few years before we did this project, um, we'd done another project um, which had the title of The Role of Universities in Social Transformation. Um, and the idea there was to focus on the roles that universities play in societies which are undergoing radical transformation. So we were looking at universities in post-apartheid South Africa. We were looking at universities in some of the post-communist Central and Eastern European countries, some Latin American um, countries um, as, um, as, as, as well. Um, when I say we, um, we coordinated the project, but basically the work was carried out by different research teams within the particular countries that were, um, that were participating. And just in a sense, um, a few of the headlines, you know, I think from that um, project was that actually universities often seem to be more the preserve of the old elites and the old groups of privilege rather than the radical change, you know, elements. Um, and um, so it, it didn't particularly tell a story of, you know, the, the universities at the vanguard of social change. It was more almost the sort of being pulled along, you know, after the, after the event. Um, although I think 
one got both things. One, one could have impacts which were planned, which were responsive, which were universities doing things which they were required to do by other groups in, in society. But equally, there, there were examples of more, of more radical um, impacts. Um, certainly within the UK, um, I'm not even sure that um, the word transformation is, is an appropriate term anyway. And certainly, I don't think I would want to, to call it a radical transformation. But nevertheless, it is still, I think, the case that the role of higher education and the investment in it is largely justified in terms of claims made about its impact on social uh, and personal change. So, some themes then emerging as we got into the um, as we got into the project, um, and. The first point to make is that we were looking at four regions and to, to, to perhaps state the obvious that regions are different um, and in a range of, um, of different ways um, and I would um, you know suggest you know that these factors that were relevant in the UK are probably going to be uh, um, quite um, important in other places as well. Um, one of the things which um, pretty quickly um, became um, an important theme um, was this notion of image and, and, and confidence that in many respects um, having a successful university um, was generally regarded as helping to give a, a positive image to the town or the city that it was located in. But equally, it was quite difficult for a university um, to achieve a positive image and reputation if it was located in a place that 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 that, that didn't have it in the in the you know in the in the in the in the in the in the first place, and quite a few, quite a quite a, uh, certainly in a couple of the um, of the of the of, of the case studies, that kind of reciprocal relationship between image of place and image of, and reputation of university um, was seen to be rather important. Well, regions are different, universities are different. Um, I've um, listed a few things uh, um, there. I won't um, go um, through, them, through them, them all. They're to some extent to do with their students, to some extent to do with uh, um, the links between um, the university and, and and, and, their, and their place. I think it is worth mentioning in terms of students, and this may be a bit different in, 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 in Slovenia, is that I think unlike a lot of European countries, it has been quite traditional in the UK um, for students to go away to study. So you know, you 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 choose a university at the other end of your at the other end of the country. There is not the tradition of going to the local university, and one of the things that that helps to do is to um, create quite a status hierarchy. So you know that 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 you know which are the places that are the most difficult ones to get into. Uh, whereas if people were just on the whole going to their local one, you wouldn't get the hierarchy in quite the same way. Just to illustrate some of these things, I, I'll give you um, <clears throat> a little story that came out in one of the uh, seminars we'd organised for the for the for the project. Where, um, our researchers were. Um, saying something about our, um, the case study in Manchester and were basically sort of pre presenting a picture of the University of Manchester as the prestigious research 
focused university with a global focus, you know, that, that really the University of Manchester sort of saw itself in, in a sort of a global context. Whereas alongside it, um, and the comparison was being made with Manchester Metropolitan University, a former polytechnic, and this was deemed to be um, more uh, um, locally embedded, um, servicing the, the, re the, the requirements of the region. <clears throat> now this is what you know, the researchers were saying. <clears throat> and it was very interesting because some of the other people in the meeting who were not part of the project, but they knew Manchester rather well, um, explained to us that we'd got it completely wrong. And it's rather nice what we were told. And this was where a little bit of hit, you need to know your history. Um, round about the, the 1820s, I think it was, um, the the Victorian bourgeoisie in, in, you know, in, in, Ma in Manchester created something called Owens College. And um, Owens College basically serviced the needs of the Victorian bourgeoisie and at the turn of the century um, was converted into the Victorian University of Manchester and developed from then on. But then it was explained that pretty much the same time, but actually if anything a few years a few years earlier in the 1820s, um, also created in Manchester was the Mechanics Institute. And the Mechanics Institute was there to service the Victorian working class, so the Victorian proletariat. And actually it took the Mechanics Institute, um, an extra century to make it to university status when it finally made it to being Manchester Metropolitan University in 1992, as it were. And so, in summary, we were told that the difference between these two institutions was nothing to do with global and local. It was everything to do with social class. And I thought it was quite a neat, you know, uh, 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 way of of um, of, uh, of presenting it. I wanted to share you that because I I come from Manchester myself, you see, so it is it's quite a, um, close to my heart, as it were. So then, universities and their regions, and I I think I've I I indicated already, um, universities interact with their regions um, in in different ways. Um, certainly there is a perception that universities influence what is possible within their regions. So you will hear people arguing that having a, a successful university or two or three of them can be very helpful in persuading firms to come and invest in the in the region in terms of providing the, the, the sort of the scientific base, the, the training of, of, um, of, of, of manpower. But equally, regions influence what is possible within, um, within their universities. Um, that um, a, univer um, a region um, which is not regarded as attractive, is not regarded as a place where anybody would want to go, may itself find, it, find itself difficult to um, recruit um, um, both staff and, and students. You know, if nobody wants to go there, it's going to be rather difficult to make a successful university. And I think one of the things we also um, discovered was that in certainly in some of the more remoter places, um, universities could play quite a distinctive, quite an important role in opening place to, if you like, the wider world. Um, <clears throat> I remember uh, when we started doing um, the project up in, um, in Teesside, the, um, the Vice-Chancellor, the Rector of the University, you know, proudly told us that um, 
his university had recently been voted as the second most important institution in the Teesside area. Um, it came second to the local football team. Um, but there was a sense in which what the football team and the university shared together is that for a lot of people who didn't live in Teesside, your only reasons for going there would probably be either to go to the university or to watch a football match, really. You know, that these were the, the two linkages, you know, between the place and the wider world, the, 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 um, the football team um, and, uh, and the university. Um, <clears throat> let me now then say a few things about the... the um, the social and cultural perspectives, which were the focus of, um, of the project. Um, first of all, though, um, not to ignore the economic. Um, and quite clearly, um, social mobility is affected by economic developments, so that if if universities can help with the generation of, of um, new employment opportunities, um, there are broader um, benefits to the local um, population. Um, aspirations can also be affected by economic developments. Um, if, there are, um, if there are jobs um, then the aspirations may um, may grow to 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 fit the jobs. In all of these cases, I think there are there are of course assumptions about um, about mobility in in a geographical um, sense. Um, and um, in case I, I I forget, I should also you know mention the um, the not uncommon pattern of um, higher education um, being an escape route out of a region. So the, the, the brighter local students, they go to university, whether it's the local one or another one, and then they leave because the jobs are outside. And so it, it, the, 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 there is a kind of export um, uh, function um, going on. And then um, the economic itself can be um, affected by aspirations, confidence, identity, image, um, again, um, which universities affect. One of the themes that was, was emphasized was a notion of cultural um, attractiveness. Um, I mentioned on, on, the, on the slide of, of a kind of high culture, the concerts, the theatre, the museums, you know, etc. And I, I, I don't know whether it's the case in, in, in Ljubljana, but you, you, you do find that, that, that some universities have quite a key local role in managing the local, muse the local, the, the local museums. Um, and this cultural attractiveness um, of itself may, um, may attract inward investment and, um, and mobility. Um, I mean, again, I remember, um, this was actually for another project, but interviewing um, somebody in, in Manchester who was a businessman who had a, um, well, businessman can politician. He, he had a role of, of um, economic um, development, bringing new businesses um, in. And in terms of the, the labor force for that, he said, we're actually not interested in what our local universities are doing. We want to recruit the best people from all over the world. And it doesn't really, you, you know, we, we will go for the best people. But we want those best people to want to come here. And the fact whether they will actually want to come here or not, this is where the universities may have an effect. 
this is where the um, the students who go on to work in the hotels work in the work in the restaurants and and ironically for the, the picture was being presented was that the the, uni the, the the Manchester universities might be doing more for the economy of Manchester in bringing out good graduates from hotel and catering um, than in producing the scientists because the scientists that would be a global labour market um, and the local one was much more service industries you know but, but you know but, but basically um, so the notions of you know making places attractive um, and the the shared interests of both universities and of regional planners um, in doing that um, was another theme across I think probably all of the case studies one way um, or another. But the cultural is important um, in its own right. Um, and there are a lot of different um, takes on culture, um, quite traditionally in, 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 in many of our older universities there have been long traditions of um, what is called town versus gown conflict um, and certainly um, we found um, some quite serious um, conflicts um, between the university and local residents, um, conflicts about um, accommodation, students were taking up all the available rented housing, conflicts even about car parking, you know, they're, they're, they're particularly when you had local students, you know, they came in and they parked their, 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 their cars, those would be negatives. On the other hand, positives would be um, having the students around tended to mean that, um, you know, there were more bistros, there were more bars, you know, in the town, you know, the town could become a more attractive, you know, place because of the student, um, you know, market. And, um, and, and again, a reciprocal um, relationship where, I mean, well, we know from other research that <clears throat> for all the, the, the questions of status and reputational differences between universities, one of the important factors that influence students' choice of university is how good is the nightlife, you know, are there clubs, are there bars, are there, you know, what's going on in, 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 the, um, in the place. And of course the students themselves help, help create that, you know, that, that nightlife. And so these are senses in which, in which social and cultural transformations can actually um, take, um, take place. But other things, and the, the things where universities had, um, I mean, I've mentioned universities running museums and, and so on. Um, notions of active citizenship, um, university staff um, taking part in, in regional committees, being on um, the boards of school governing bodies, um, student volunteering. Um, those of you who have got any familiarity with the traditions of, of, of um, what is known as service learning in the United States, particularly in the liberal arts colleges, which I think is much stronger there than in most, uh, you know, than, 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 in, than in Europe, would have a, a feel for that. Um, there were also notions of the university as good neighbor um, senior staff serving on key regional agencies, regional um, committees, um, and certainly in, in some of our cases, 
um, universities were regarded as quite important in that, in bringing a degree of neutrality and objectivity um, to potential conflicts between other interested uh, um, parties um, within within a region. Um, <clears throat> and I've mentioned already notions of image, attractiveness, confidence of a region. The, the fourth thing, though, which I think was came out as, as important, was the importance of the public sector, of public services. <clears throat> and in some respects, you might feel that this is, to some extent, stating the obvious, but because certainly a lot of the discussion and certainly policy debate in Britain focuses on university business links, you know, and what are universities doing to make private enterprise more profitable and successful, can ignore all the links that there are between universities and hospitals and schools and local government and in all sorts of ways. And, and, in, and in many places, you know, that, that was really um, a pretty uh, um, key uh, factor uh, providing both initial training and the CPD is what we term continuing professional um, development, um, providing uh, um, research um, on you know on on, on lo local local issues for public for public bodies. Uh, and this was something which has both benefits for the people who already live there, but also feeds into the notions of the attractiveness of the region and its attractiveness to, towards um, inward investors and, um, and individuals. Um, there were both differences and common themes um, between the case studies, universities certainly did differ in terms of their global local balance and notwithstanding the Manchester story, uh, University of Manchester would be a more sort of, you know, global international university than, than um, Manchester Metropolitan, but that didn't mean, but, but it, it, it certainly seemed to us that in, in different ways um, all universities were trying to get a balance um, that between, between the global and the local, with, with the regional and the national, um, you know, sitting in between. Um, because the two things were were ultimately connected, um, so that mentioning the University of Teesside again, in terms of um, it did, I think, and does have, I think, a predominant service to its local region as it, as it, as it, as, it, as its main um, mission. But in doing that, and as part of making that contribution, it needs to be, to have a sense that it is a university with a good reputation, because that is, that is the way it will service its region more effectively. Therefore, if it is only local people coming to the university, that doesn't send out the right messages. It wants to recruit people nationally and internationally. Um, so, because by, by becoming a, a good university in the sort of the global national criteria, that is helping it service its local community and population um, as well. And in terms of the differences that we, that we found, um, I mean, I just mentioned sort of three of them that are, that are up there. And I've mentioned um, image. I think image was universally important, uh, but where we actually found differences was where image was um, 
was a positive or a negative, you know, and um, images of place, reputations of, um, of university um, are um, hugely difficult to, um, you know, to change. Um, little things which certainly amuse me and they might amuse you as well of the, the, the tricks that universities get, can, can get up to. Um, in, um, in Cambridge, you know, which is rather good on image, um, there are actually two universities. There is the University of Cambridge, which you may have heard, and there is um, something called Anglia Ruskin University, um, which is partly situated there. But what is wonderful, if, if any of you ever um, visit Cambridge on the train, as you come into Cambridge Railway Station, you know, there are big signs all over the station saying, Welcome to Cambridge, home of Anglia Ruskin University. And I think that is such brilliant marketing, you know. Um, so, image, very important. Um, social mobility. Um, also, um, everybody will, will sign up for that as being important. What it means is, um, of course, different in different, um, in different contexts. And a distinction which I've heard um, made, which I think is quite a good one and is perhaps more generally applicable, is are we talking about social mobility as being giant leaps for the few, as in elite recruitment, or small steps for the many? And I think in some respects, I think it would be possible to almost categorize our case study institutions as being the giant leaps for the few universities against the small steps for the many um, universities when it comes to widening participation and social and and and, uh, and, 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 and social mobility. Some connecting themes which I think I would say were were important to um, all four of our of our cases, um, the importance of history and geography, both of the place and of the the higher education institutions that were located there. This balancing of you know the local and the global, or we said there the the regional, national, and international. Um, the recognition of the of of strategic and structural factors. Um, the, of balancing imports and exports, um, exports in the sense that your you know your successful graduates may leave, imports is bringing students in, but maybe other forms of investment as well. Um, distinguishing image and um, reality, and actually making the point that both are important. You know, I mean. Some places that have a lousy image, you know, I think, you know, are rather good, nice places, and they've got they've got an image problem, um, but it's serious if they if if they do. And again, I've mentioned distinguishing discourses, activities, and impacts. Um, and again, one of the measurement problems of impact. Um, which I've not mentioned is the issue of of um, of time scale, um, and in one of the in one of the case study institutions, I did actually find the the, um, the university's leadership um, for me kind of quite impressive in terms of I think the scale of their thinking that. Um, 
they were sort of doing things with, you know, people in the local community. And they were saying, well, we will see the impact of what we are doing in the community now when the people that we're doing it with have had their children and they have grown up to age 20. So in other words, we're talking about generational change and that's really the, the, um, you know, the, 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 key, um, the key measure. Um, one of the things which we've mentioned, initiatives as against normal business, and I think there's the notions of embeddedness. I think there were, there were and this partly is, is the, um, where we found a, a certain element of probably cynicism around, which was basically saying, well, yes, if the university finds there is a, a pocket of money somewhere that they can chase after, you know, they'll do something for a year or two until the money runs out and then it's all dead again. So that would be the short-term initiative, you know, which doesn't have any lasting effect. Um, the usual issues of intended and unintended outcomes, um, institutional drivers and strategies, um, issues of communication and collaboration. I mean, there is quite a lot, and we can maybe get into some of these things in discussion, about um, issues to do with, if you like, the inner life of the universities, you know, who, when we're talking about the university engaging with its region and engaging with, it, with, it, with, with, it, with, it, with its communities, who are we actually talking about within the within 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 the universities? Is 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 this is this everybody? Is this special units? Is this some people? You know, more than and what and what and what are the implications of this for the role of academics? You know, I mean, do academics need to learn new skills, new comp new 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 competences in order to deliver? you know, new activities to, to, new, to new groups. Then, um, the questions of, well, what is being transformed? Um, the usual answers are in terms of economy, but I think from the project that we, we've done, we would also add a lot of other things to do with image, to do with the aspirations of local people, the opportunities for local people, local cultures and relationships, um, inequalities and relative disadvantage, notions of citizenship, and the leadership and coordination capacities which come from having a university um, in your midst. And I would so sort of say that that I think again in all of the case studies, when you know the, the different groups that we talked to, um, I think in all cases the universities were always regarded as very important local institutions to to those regions, to those communities. Now, that assignation of importance was often accompanied by a lot of frustration um, at actually getting the university to respond in the ways that people wanted it to um, to respond and it would also be coupled with you know the negatives about conflicts about car parking and so on but generally um, that that where there was a sort of a consensus was that the um, the university was um, was important. As well as the question of what is being transformed, there is a question of who is being transformed or not. And again, one of the things which we will certainly be writing about quite a bit in, in, um, in the book of the project is what do you mean by region anyway? And I mean, what, what is the geographical place? Because there are certain sorts of impact where basically you're talking about the streets around the university. You know, there is a locality which is very, very local indeed, which has its own um, set of issues. And then there is a much larger economic region, and then there are points in between there. So, um, 
and you know how um, how you as an individual or, or, or you know the broader society is going to be um, affected um, does depend this again comes back to my point about um, geography being um, important um, and then of course you know the usual suspects as it were you know the notions really of um, winners and losers um, who is benefiting who is getting disadvantaged and the usual questions to do with social class to do with ethnicity to do with age and 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 uh, and and, and, ge and gender and this isn't necessarily just being seen in terms of um, and, and I think this perhaps is the an important point to 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 to, to, to mention is that I think this takes the equity issues beyond the point about who enrolls in university and who doesn't. Even if you don't go anywhere near the university as an, as an individual, your life may be affected by having a university in your, in your, um, in your midst, in both positive and in, and in, and in, and in negative um, ways. Well, that's the, the UK project. Um, if you or we ever did um, a study on Ljubljana, this is mine, you, you will be much better to um, speculate, and which is what I suggest we now start doing in a minute, um, speculating on what story would be told, you know, in a, in a place um, like Ljubljana. Um, I mentioned the capital city um, dilemma, and what I had in mind was a few years back, um, I was part of a review team um, doing an evaluation of the University of Oslo in Norway. And one of the themes that came out of that, and one of the, the, the things which the university was saying to us, was that um, our, our ability to be the world-class research university that we want to be is compromised by being the university of the capi in the capital city. So we have, di we have to divert attention to running the city's museums, you know, was one thing. But also, it, it was explained, you know, to us that on certain sort of purely kind of national factors, so <clears throat> should, um, you, you get a notion that, well, it would be quite wrong if we didn't have any degree courses in Portuguese within Norway so Oslo had better do it you see and so there were all sorts of things which the University of Oslo perceived that it was having to do because it was all wrapped up with some sort of notions of national Norwegian pride and which was assigned to the capital city which you know, certainly at that time, the, you know, the university felt that it was a problem. You could, of course, say that that um, this was just them sort of thinking up an excuse for why, in fact, they weren't the world-class research university that they um, they aspired um, to be. Um, <clears throat> But other themes, you know, that they're looking out versus looking in. Um, a lot of people come to Slovenia because of the university, which is a looking in effect. But um, the university, you know, of itself looks looks out and has a global um, um, re uh, reach. Um, I mean, one of the things which I, I would be quite interested in is within, and in a sense, going beyond, you know, Ljubljana is Ljubljana to Slovenia, is the issue, and I think 
Pavel and I have talked about this, you know, before, of, of, of how you handle um, higher education differentiation in a pretty small in a pretty small system. You know, I mean, we've got about a hundred and fifty different universities in the UK. You know, all with their different reputational and image. You know. Um, Issues, you know, serving different parts of the population and different and different regions and and you know and so and so on, and it's a very different situation here. And I'm just wondering how how that works. Um, the only show in town, I had to say that. This was a phrase that was used to us in one of our case studies by the Vice Chancellor of the University. And he, um, he presented it, and I think our project was presented in a pretty positive light, in that <clears throat> where you had a single dominant university, then you didn't have a lot of time wasting competition and rivalries and people not wanting to talk to, you know, to who. And it was also very clear for, you know, people within the region or in the community, you know, if you want the support of the university, you go there. And everything was, was you know, was, was simpler. Um, whereas if you have got sort of half a dozen competing and rivalrous, you know, universities, it would work differently. Of course, some would argue, and those who, you know, believe in market forces and competition would be, would, would I'm sure be, be, be arguing the, um, the, the, um, the opposite. Um, you're clearly close to power. I mean, I've, I've noticed on previous um, visits to the university, um, you know, how many people who work at the university end up in government at certain points of, 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 of time. Um, and then notions of, um, you know, public goods. Which publics are we talking about? You know, which groups in, in, in society do you, um, do you um, relate to? And I'll just sort of finish by going back to my earlier transformations project because I was just reminding myself of what some of the, the major conclusions of that project, and that was looking across a range of, 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 of countries, uh, which I don't think particularly sort of fit the Slovenia you know, context, but you know, there was quite a wide range. And we just made a sort of, we tried to draw up some very, very sort of broad generalizations under the headings of the economic, the political, the social, and the cultural. And where one was talking about transformative um, change, I think our conclusions from that project, we had about 15 different countries, you know, involved, was that on the whole, the contribution that universities seemed to be making was pretty weak. Um, and it was, um, on the whole, um, it took a responsive mode. So in other words, the economic change was not being generated by the university, but the university may be called upon to do new things as a result of economic changes that were, take, that were, uh, that were taking place. Um, we did note in the report, though, that arguably you've got to take longer time frames to really assess that, and this project was taking relatively short time frames. Um, on the political, we found quite complex and contradictory um, stories. Uh, and in fact, um, I do think that one of the remarkable things of universities is their capacity to do completely contradictory things um, in, in, um, in, 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 in parallel, you know, in both um, supporting and maintaining the status quo and sowing the seeds for the transformation of that, uh, of, 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 of that, um, of that status quo. Um, when we got onto the social, though, I think the overall picture was probably 
the reproductive function on balance tended to be more important than the transformative. Um, and I think when we came to the, the cultural, again, contradictory stories of this particular set of countries, which I you know, mentioned before, had many of them had, had in their recent history been relatively um, closed societies and the role of universities in opening up those closed societies um, was evident. Um, but one of the other, it's not quite contradictory, but I think uh, in, in contrast to that, was that within closed, often authoritarian societies, um, universities are having been the protected space where I think we talk about in our, our report um, repressed nationalism had lived and survived while uh, um, uh, it, it, it didn't have a, a political voice and so the notion that in certain political circumstances um, universities play the role of repositories of repressed nationalisms um, was um, another of the themes from that project. So I've wandered around a little bit telling some you know, sort of local regional stories in the UK and then dashed off globally for a few minutes. I'm going to stop now and, 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 and let you, uh, you know, comment or tell me about Ljubljana or anything else you want to tell me. Thanks.